this feels fairly normal, seeing this size of a uh, group today. But as we continue to recover from pandemic issues, we pray God help us to get back to whatever normal is going to be, or whatever normal is. So moving forward, I think that as you saw those, uh, you know, I, I think that you might consider getting involved in the children's ministry. Uh, I, as I saw Jessica wrapping up all those presents, and I, I was wondering what those stacks of cash were for. And, and so, I don't know if you'd be interested in that. No, that's not, that's not real, a real thing. But thank you to everybody who has been involved this year. Thank you, Jessica. Um, as we've been transitioning through our mission statement, finding the connection biblically between our mission and the Word of God itself, we have landed into nurture. Last week we talked about what it is to nurture, what it is to help foster growth, right? And it's something that happens both within us as we grow, but it's also something that we do. And I refer to the word disciple. That's really what the Bible talks about in growth. Our young people are our disciples. When they were baptized, we committed ourselves to some, some type, type of input into their life to guide and to help them. That's a part of the charge that we're given in the Reformed Church. How many of you all remember that? Yes, it's there, right? And so, when we consider what church is and being a family in Christ, doesn't that really underscore how important those commitments are? This is not just a place to be a consumer of church. It's a place to participate and to be someone who is actively engaged and involved in helping grow someone else. Now that's just young people. And if you don't consider yourself a young person, nurturing is even for you. It's a wonderful thing to see folks that are gifted and blessed with the ability to nurture, but it's even better to see folks that spend their effort doing it and actively engage at being good at it. And those kind of caregivers in our congregation are wonderful, God-sent people. And if that's you today, thank you for that example. For those of us that have much growth in the area of nurture, maybe you could say, oh, that's, that's me. That's probably all of us. We can look to certain folks to help us as examples, but we always have the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to guide us. Today, as we look at nurture once again, we look at our young people, but we look around and look at all of us who need to be held in some sort of loving, caring relationship. Every single one of us. I'm grateful that we have one another, but ultimately that we have God as our caregiver. It's the Lord who himself wants to nurture us. Today, as we focus on gratitude, I want to show you that connection. Emphasizing that gratitude is a key part of nurturing. Think about your world and your life and how you've been blessed, how you've been spoken into by others. It's been through gratitude, a recognition of something that you are, have done, what you contribute to the world in some way. And so young people, are you with me? This old guy's talking up here, I know. It's, 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 it's this awful thing, right? 
But if you could, just look at me for just a moment. Do, does your mom and dad, is it the most important thing to them that you become a doctor, a lawyer, a business person, a teacher, a surgeon, a musician, a professional in, the, in, uh, in sports, whether it's whatever sport in the world that you love, is that the most important thing to your parents? It's not, is it? What is important to mom and dad? What is important to the church? Some of us would say it's happiness, right? That's sort of at the core of it. If we could just be happy, right? I would want to exchange that happy word for joy. Because somehow that's God-infused happiness that gives meaning to your life. It gives something that's better than just something temporarily that feels good. It's actually really awesome to have that joy because it's so deep inside. Whereas happiness can be sort of here and gone. Here's where we're going to go today. When we think of the people that love us and help us to feel good about our world, by being, grat by being grateful and seeing those good things within us, we build joy. We are building something that's nurturing. And so today, our challenge together is this, to find all of the good things that other people bring into our world. Find those things and mention them. Talk about them. Spend some time thinking about it. Think about all the things that we think about. We think about some things, we spend a lot of time thinking about things that it's like too much time about that one thing. Remember, what's important to mom and dad, to the church, to God? It's not about success in life. It's about having something that's meaningful and joyful. Why? Because that's where the gospel lives. In that light. Infused in who we are. And so here's, here's one point for you. Out of this rambling. If you're looking for something, whatever it is, eventually you're going to find it. I love this game, Huckle Buckle Beanstalk. I think it's a real thing. I don't know if Roxanne made this up. I discovered it when I started hanging out at the Walpole's house as, like, I guess I was maybe 19 at the time, or 20, I don't know. But, you know, it'd be like a rainy, nasty day, and I would be over visiting Jessica before we were married, and I, we couldn't do anything, and out came this game called Huckle Buckle Beanstalk. And I've even used this in a sermon before. This is nothing new. How I many of you guys remember that from way back when. And you look for something, and it could even be a color, and then you find that object that's hidden in the room by someone else. Someone's hidden something. There's something hidden in this room. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll, you'll, you'll see this other thing that's hidden at some point, and it squeaks a little bit. Yes, I see you. You saw it. In there. And so I don't know who put that there. Wink, wink. But if you were to look for something that I said you know, was black. Find something that's black. What would you do? What, you, what could it be? Yell it out. It's okay. Piano. The piano? No, not the piano. Not the camera. Uh, my ties. Craig's got it. It's my ties, what I had in mind. He's a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, let's do something else. Um, Okay. And in the game, Hubble Bubble Beanstalk, you, you can actually go look for it, right? You can get up and you go look for it. And then when you found it, you sit down. And you say, Hubble Bubble Beanstalk. Like, I found it. Like, and you don't tell anybody. You, you actually can throw other people off, too. You don't just go up to it and be like, oh, Hubble Bubble Beanstalk. Because then it would give it away. That's what it was. But if I said something purple, what would you, what could it be, purple? 
the flowers behind you. I saw those, but that's not what I'm thinking of right now. I wanted to trick you. Uh, Martha, what? The banners, no, not the banners. The candles. The candles. That's it, the candles. It's the candles on the side of the walls here all along. Yeah. You win. Get that stack of cash out. That's the prize. <laughs> stack of cash prize for that one. Stack of cash over there. Mission free. Um, if you look for something long enough, you're going to find it. You're going to see it. Does anybody know what a hypochondriac is? Yes. Now, you young, younger people, you may not know this crazy weird word. A hypochondriac is someone that has a disorder, and it's sad, actually. It's actually sad, because this is a real thing, okay? This is not just somebody being silly. This is a, this is a for real bad thing to have, and it's, it's, not, it's, it's awful for them. It's like being sick in a way, right? But what their sickness is, is that they see every symptom and sign within their body as a sickness or disease. They think automatically that, I, I'll tell you what, here you go, guys. Uh, let's see if I can get some heads turned this way. So, has anybody ever seen uh, a movie with somebody named Melon? What's that movie called? What's that movie with Melon and Alex? What is that movie? What is it? Oh, I can't hear you. Did you say it? Oh, I think I got some heads turning now. Yeah, it's Madagascar. You remember Melman? What, what is Melman? A giraffe. A real tall giraffe, right? And what's he have all over his body? Spots. He looks at those spots and what's he think? It's a disease. It's as if he's a hypochondriac. That's what that is. That's awful. He's always nervous. And, oh, no, uh, this bad thing, this bad thing. It's not bad. It's, but it's not. That's just the way that God made it, right? If you look for something long enough, you will find it. If you are looking to be sick, you're going to find yourself sick. If you're looking for good things, guess what? It's going to start to even grow. What we pay attention to even grows. So if I said to any of my kids, wow, I am, I am so blessed that you are so thankful, guess what I'm going to get more of? Thankfulness. If all I focus on is something that's bad. Stop doing that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. If I use no all the time with Joshua, not good. It's just, that's the way he gets attention. That's what he'll, it'll grow. If I look for something bad, I will find it. Today, huckle, buckle, bean stalk. When I see truth and purity and love and joy and commitment and gratitude and praise, thanksgiving and goodness and kindness. Think of those fruit of the Spirit. When I see someone that's at peace in a world that should be chaotic, huckle buckle being stalled. How are you so peaceful in this state? I recognize it and I speak to it and it grows. That is nurturing. When I have conversations with you and I hear about your love for Jesus and how you love spiritual music, something grows within us. The Word tells us to think about these things. And so today, in a sermon that was supposed to be half that long, please take that with you. If you look for it, you'll find it. Focus on the things that God wants you to look for. Let's look for the fruit of the Spirit. Let's look for that great character. Let's nurture one another in joy and grow together. Amen.